Many visitors here to the village of Blockley probably come looking for a different village entirely, the fictional village of Kembleford, home to TV character Father Brown and his parish church. Now the parish church of St Mary's in Kembleford is in fact the church here in Blockley, St Peter and St Paul's. And for many people that may be the full extent of their visit to Blockley. But if you explored just a little bit further, you'd find that Blockley is unique amongst the villages in the Cotswolds and really holds some very interesting secrets. Blockley is a name shared by both the parish and the village. The picturesque Blockley Parish is situated in the North Cotswolds, spanning approximately 12 square miles or around 30 square kilometres. The parish is one of the largest in England and has a population of around 2,000. It includes the villages of Drayton, Aston Magna, Northwick, Paxford and of course Blockley. Blockley Village is the main population centre of the parish. Blockley dates back to at least the 9th century. The first church is believed to have been built on this site in around 800 AD. The building we see today dates back to the Norman period and has been remodelled many times with many renovations through the centuries. The name Blockley also dates back to around the same time in the 9th century and was originally Blockenlea. The name is derived from an old English phrase and means blockers, forest glade or clearing. Over time the name has had many variations with Blockley likely appearing in its current form sometime in the Middle Ages. By the time of the Doomsday Book of 1086, Blockley had developed into a major centre of industry and the Doomsday Book records that the village has 107 households, placing it in the top 20% of all recorded settlements across England at that time. It also shows that Blockley had no less than 12 mills and here we see the industrial nature of the village. In the 11th century, mills were powered either by oxen or by water. And though Blockley had oxen, according to the Doomsday Book, they were being used in the surrounding fields for agriculture. Rather, all of Blockley's mills were powered by the fast flowing water of Brockley Brook. Blockley Brook rises in the nearby Borton Woods, just south of the village. Though you cannot get to the head of the spring without a permit, you can walk through the woods and the rather steep valley formed by the brook over the many centuries. The brook exits the woods and immediately enters a mill pond belonging to what was Dovedale Mill. Generally in the Cotswolds we might associate a mill with the wool industry, but the mills of Blockley were used for a wide variety of purposes, including milling and creating cloth and corn as well as other agricultural products. This makes Blockley quite unique amongst the Cotswolds. Dovedale milled flour and chaff. It is also the site of some remarkable experiments undertaken by its owner who in 1885 used the power of the waterfall from the mill pond to power a water turbine and produced electricity both for Dovedale House and for the church. Like just about all of Blockley's ancient mills, Dovedale is now converted to a private residence and the millworks have long disappeared. This does mean that Blockley Brook is often obscured from view as it flows through and beneath the homes of Blockley. But you're never far from the brook and the sound of the gushing water. Where it does appear in public, it does create beautiful picturesque scenes before disappearing once more into a garden or under a stone wall. Brook Lane is a footpath off the high street that does allow you to once more track the course of the river. Despite the very industrial nature of the mills all along the river and the valley floor, agriculture and farming were and remain important to the village. The next meaningful glimpse we get of the brook is as it emerges from the old mill, which you can find on the appropriately named Mill Lane. This mill dates back to 1705, but is now a private home, having ceased working early in the 20th century. The mill pool and sluices survive, though are hidden from view behind the house. You can follow the river along Mill Lane, accompanied by the blockly soundtrack of excited gushing water, until once more it disappears under the road and into Mill Dean Gardens. 
Mildeen Gardens is the epitome of in the industrial age of Blockley, as it used to be an iron foundry. Today, all that remains of its industrial heritage is the Mill Pond, though sadly you can no longer visit the pond or garden of Mildeen, as they are closed to the public since 2020. The weaving trade in the Cotswolds started to decline with the Industrial Revolution as steam-powered machines in the north of England started to replace the water-powered mills of the Cotswolds. But Blockley was quick to react and reinvented itself. Blockley focused instead on silk production and providing raw materials to the great silk centre of Coventry. Silk production required much larger buildings and the largest of these new buildings was at West Macott's Mill where we now find the brook once more. It was built before 1688 and was in fact two mills in one. It processed silk and rami and was run by the West Macott family and most recently has been converted into flats and is now named Blockley Court. Also remodeled was the old silk mill, our last mill on the brook. No longer a mill at all today, this property is a luxurious Cotswold cottage available for rent, but visitors can still enjoy Blockley Brook and the outstanding mill pond that is now a key and very beautiful feature of the property. Of course, the burgeoning silk industry did draw in an influx of workers who needed to be accommodated, and some of their homes can still be seen in the village today. For example, here at Northwick Terrace, in fact, Blockley has an unusually high proportion of properties that are terraced compared to Gloucestershire and the rest of England. And this is in large part due to the terraced accommodation that was once provided for the mill workers. The final secret that Blockley holds is much more modern and hides behind the rather insignificant door of Paxton House. In 1943, Paxton House was the HQ of the American Super 6 Division, commanded by General Patton. He and General Eisenhower met here at Paxton House to plan the Normandy landings. And so we find ourselves back in the center of the village at St. Peter's and St. Paul's Church and ready for a beverage and snack from the beautiful and very modern village cafe. Blockley is a remarkable village, steeped in history and hidden through the ages. It has remodeled itself countless times, evolving to keep in step with a changing world. And today, the majority of the beautiful buildings are in fact holiday cottages, providing tourists with a superb base from which to explore either the neighboring foothills through the various footpaths and bridleways, or to the North Cotswold area and the nearby villages such as Borton on the Hill, Morton in Marsh or Chipping Campton. Be sure to come early as there is extremely limited car parking space and pack both a good pair of walking boots and a supply of stamina since no single road is ever level in this remarkable village. And let Brockley Brook transport you back in time. If you've enjoyed this look at Blockley, please give this video a like and share it with others. And if you've got this far and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing and also click the notification bell icon. And that means you'll get notified every time a new Cotswold village is featured here on the Cotswold Traveller channel. Until next time, goodbye.